Goedemiddag, welkom op uh, het vijfde deel van de Industry Days van de World Soundtrack Awards. We gaan deze talk in het Engels doen. Dat is omdat iedereen hier vooraan zou kunnen meevolgen. I'm just explaining to them that we will do this talk in English. Um, hier aan mijn rechterkant heb ik Nathalie Alvarez Messen. Zij is regisseur van de film uh, Claire Sola. Clara Sola. En uh, naast haar zit Ruben de Gezelle, de. De, de, de componist. En daarom zijn we hier vandaag om filmmuziek te vieren. Um, first of all, Natalie, can you explain to the audience a little bit about the movie? What's it about for people who might not have seen it yet? Yes, for sure. Hi, thanks for coming, first of all. I'm very excited to be here. We had the premiere, Belgian premiere yesterday and it was wonderful. And it's a, a Belgian film as well. It's a Belgian co-production, so... This is special. Um, yes, so the film is about a woman uh, called uh, Clara, who is 40 years old and lives in a mountain village in Costa Rica. And the people in her village believe that she has a special connection to the Virgin Mary. So they come to her for prayers and miracles. And because being a saint is not compatible with having a sexuality, she's denied of her this part of her all her life. So the movie is a journey. Uh, of her liberating herself of this role and experiencing a sexual awakening parallel to a mystical awakening of sorts. Yeah. Okay, in a nutshell. Uh, <laughs> Ruben, how did you get involved in this project? I guess because of the Belgian connection. Um, well, I, I, I've met Natalie uh, a few years before we started working on, on Clara Sola. We met actually in Berlin and uh, we grabbed a quick coffee for, um, and then we connected in a way. And um, I think she was doing all of the post-production in, 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 in Belgium. And um, yeah, she, she wanted to have some uh, Belgian composer because she would, uh, yeah, she would, she would be here she, uh, in Belgium for a long period. And it would be more efficient and more, more good to work with a Belgian composer. And then I think you started to look like that, the two Belgian composers. Voilà. You also worked with a Belgian editor as well. Yes, I think the whole post-production team is, is Belgian, but actually the composer didn't need to be Belgian. Oh. Uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I, I wanted <laughs> I wanted this, this man here. No, I looked through the whole uh, guild of composers and I didn't uh, find... Because the producers were telling me, oh man, take someone that has done a lot of films. It's my first feature, so it's good to work with very experienced people. A lot of a lot of experience. And then I was looking, looking, I said, oh no, but uh, but still Ruben, Ruben. And in the end, I pitched Ruben to the producers and listened to his body of work from film, from orchestra. It's, uh, it's so beautiful. And so uh, I could not predict how it will how a piece of music will end or how it will continue and for me this was very special to because otherwise with other music sometimes i can kind of guess how it's gonna continue with ruben i couldn't do this and then i i want to work with him <laughs> your story is better than mine yeah. <laughs> um Ruben, the, the film is full of um, very interesting uh, sound designs. Um, nature is a very has a very important role in this movie as well, and you can hear it, you can see it and hear it on the screen. Um, how did you approach the music to be a side of it? So I think that that that's indeed like a very big point of the of the movie is like Clara's connection to nature. What you also explained yesterday, very nice at the screening is the only actor in the film that doesn't require anything from the from from the personage from Clara um, and nature um, plays a central role um, as we are it was shot in Costa Rica it's like full of wind full of trees full of uh, rivers um, so you have like a lot of sound design everywhere um, but the sound team was 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 very very much on point and and this film is is a slow journey And I mean, this nature sounds really formed the movie, I think. And, and my role was actually only just finding music that fits with nature indeed. And you can easily, not easily, <laughs> you can do that by, by, by just listening very closely to, to what sounds there were. Like, for example, there's a sound of a river. Okay, what kind of frequencies do we have? And where do we have room to add uh, color with music? Um, voilà. And yeah, I think it became a light score, but... At, at, at the right point, I think. 
I can imagine that at certain points sounds as such are so strong that it doesn't require any additional music, yeah. which is not <laughs> which is uh, sad news for you as a composer. Well, sad, sad or no sad? I mean, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, no, it's um, Ruben is very wise, you know, because oh. yeah. <laughs> you should know because we were sometimes doing tests sitting in the cinema listening to the music how high or low it should be working with a mixer and sometimes Ruben would say no no it's too loud the music is too loud it's taking over um, everything else and then uh, well, um, very wise <laughs> I, I just <laughs> don't I don't like the classic battle between the sound design and the music um, I try to avoid that um, so but, um, I when sound design works, it works, and and nobody ever ever assessed a, a movie on the amount of music it, there's in in it. So, voila. and essentially we all filmmakers. So, voila. Yeah. You both prepared some clips to illustrate the process how you work together. Um, maybe you can introduce the first clip. Can I say something? Yeah, please. And what's yeah, very beautiful about this uh, talk is that um, what is the saddest part about working with Ruben? <laughs> <laughs> is that I don't get to use all the music that he's composing because he is uh, creating so many pieces and proposals for each scene, it's impossible to use all of it. Um, and uh, some pieces, like we will show, they work beautifully on the scene, but then uh, when we're looking at the whole structure of the movie, uh, maybe the two pieces will be too close if they both have music and uh, there's other pieces that come uh, into consideration apart from the music so then yeah yeah I, I also they they ask like oh do you want to do a talk on class right like, yeah let's do a talk about the music that didn't work that's nice let's do it about what what didn't end up in the movie and why it didn't end up there and why something else did end up there um, on the same scene sometimes yeah. and then you get the opportunity to actually hear the beautiful music that didn't get <laughs> end oh, up in the mu in the movie Voilà. So we have a first clip, I think, and it's uh, it's a clip around a uh, firefly. Um, you in the mock version, you will notice that you don't see the firefly as it was l later added in VFX. In the final version, you will see it. We have two mock-up versions and one final version. Yes. And um, voilà, you will see like two two IDs we pitched or uh, we talked about very extensively, and then the, the final version we we got to. Afterwards, after the three clips, we will we will the light again and then we will have a discussion about it and then if you have any question at that point please do ask yes so you yeah so we'll do this with a cup a couple of time and have questions in between in case you wonder anything about the particular piece we yeah. just screened or if Perfect. you want to say like the first one was better yeah <laughs> feel free <laughs> okay well let's start the first clip first clip is a mock version of the firefly
They're all completely different. And I think the final one is the most vivid one. But why did you decide to to ask him for new music, for other music, to see if it works better or, or, or doesn't work better? Um, maybe, we have, maybe we have different perspectives. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, 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 yeah. I, I, um, go first, yeah. F for me, like, uh, it has to also do with the, the complete movie. I was very careful. I never want uh, the audience to feel sorry for the character. And for some reason, I have a feeling that very low tones are more like uh, emotionally sad for me. <laughs> so <laughs> Ruben had to work around this. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and this was something that really came up because it's something that normally composers link, I think, to, to harmony. Like It's like a feeling of sadness or a feeling of, of, of joy or whatever. Um, and it was first quite... Um, or of course, for me, quite quite a surprise to 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 find out that for Natalie it was more about the depth of the tones rather than the the voicing of the chords or the the, the kind of chords we used. Um, so that's why, for example, the second one was never really into consideration because like it it created a kind of high point for her emotionally in the film that we didn't want at that point. Um, I think also what you said, like the, the third one, is more vivid. Um, I think this is this quite the third one in a way refers back to the first one with the cello like being very sparse and very um, um how to say uh, uh, chaotic, but it's also a clip about Firefly, so it 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 worked a, ba a bit on on that side, and the second one didn't work really on that one, just created created for her emotion, which we didn't want at that point. Yes, the third one, the, uh, I have this feeling of liberation somehow. Uh, put it very simple it was a more uh, bright uh yeah more liberating feeling uh and uh, then put when we put it together with the actual firefly it's very difficult to compose to something that's not there and it was working uh i think in in the place where we were also a challenge in, in the movie is that the mu so a lot of the musical cues are very short so sometimes uh, it was difficult to build a lot uh, because there was no time to, uh, how do you express it? Well, yeah, I mean, w the the arc of the movie is a bit like that. In the beginning, there's almost no music. This is something we almost deliberately, very early on, knew. 
and then we would have more more music to fasten up the pace of the movie a bit but also create like this this further arc towards the, the earthquake we have there and the fire of course um, which are two big scenes in the movie an earthquake and a fire um, um, yeah and then suddenly in the beginning music was very like here this is uh, it's like very uh, short um, but what is also a challenge on the other hand is when music comes very close to each other because suddenly you need to link two tracks to each other that you never thought would, would have been linked together when the edit changed changed I mean everything changes I mean uh, yeah um, and you're very depending on head, on edit in this case so voila so did you write the music with the fireflies in mind because you worked on a version where you didn't see the fireflies because they had to be animated they had to be added in special effects yeah and this was actually a challenge because there was no fireflies in, in the scene but Natalie when she was next to me she wanted to feel and and, and see almost fireflies with the music so um yeah so this is why i think the 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 very sparse cello came in we we, we i mean we did seven cues on, on on just cello solo like doing these little motives and then the the, the music makes it the direct did just an amazing job on just trying to give this all a place in the spectrum because like it was just like phasing everywhere um but voila yeah but essentially he he got it right i think so voila. Are there any questions so far about this clip? Because we won't have time at the end to have a huge Q&A, but we can ask, yeah. we, we can do some questions now. Anybody if you has want. a question, you just do it. And then we, another other time we go, oh, yeah. The you, wait, oh, you have to wait for the for the box. Yeah, good. <laughs> yep, uh, magic box. Uh, <laughs> magic box, yeah, indeed. <laughs> um, the final music, did you record it uh, with an orchestra or do you do is it recorded with sounds, uh, sound libraries or...? No, so you hear it also, this is also something you will hear in the mocker version. You will hear that mocker version is like VSTs, but of course we programmed a lot. And then the, the final version is of course a recorded oh, yeah. version. Um, the recorded version in this case was a string quartet with, I think, yeah, six or seven cello solos on, on top of it. Um, but it's 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 almost like shooting a shooting a, it's an expression in, in Dutch eh? shooting a fly with a can with a cannon, uh, like it's it's because like you have these massive sessions and in the end you make it so subtle in in the final movie. But I think this level of detail is maybe necessary. If uh, yeah, uh, okay, thank yeah. you. <laughs> thank you. Any other question? If not, we continue. Oh. So man, no, okay, good. Maybe we can roll we the second we roll the clip. Yes. clip. Yeah, we go. So we decide what we put. Um, no, we we have water? like fifteen minutes now, so it's fine. Water or yucca? We can do we can do yucca. Okay, so we go to Q six. If it's fine for you. Q six, seven, and eight. Ya estoy fue puta mierda. Puta, pero no va a ver televisión. Te la, le voy a quitar la televisión. to the next one. This is not mixed either. Yeah. This is still uh, all like mock-up, to call it mock-up. Uh, we'll talk about it later, but not the final ones. Um, Uma, can you check the volume? <laughs> 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 
¡Qué hijo de puta mierda! Puta, pero no va a haber televisión. Te la, le voy a quitar la televisión. And now we go to the, the final version. Yuka. María. ¿Qué pasó, abuela? Este, hágame el favor y lleva para adentro a Clara. Clara, venga. Tiene un examen de sangre. Tiene que dejar de revolcarse tanto. might be important to mention that all these versions we just saw and heard that they were recorded by the small orchestra so yeah so what what we did we did we took a bit of a risk here actually this was a scene that we knew that had to be scored but was not scored at all before we went to re into recording so we used we recorded everything without but except for this scene we recorded everything um, and then we went back into like composing mode with all of the stems and try to make a new piece uh, even like being very rude and doing pitch shifts and uh, reverse tracks um, and very very rude actually to the music but in a way that it still uh, it became a new piece so this could be um, yeah it could be scored um, we had like all the all the confidence that it would work. <laughs> Essentially, we had some also some mock-ups in this version. You know, the mock-up being a non and not final version. Yeah. Yeah, it was basically a, a time a time question also of how much we could rep record and the budget and uh, also we knew that we were going to use some of the same themes. I mean, it had yeah. to still be related to previous themes. So this is we call this one the recycled. Uh, the recycled, the recycled piece, yeah. Uh, and um, <laughs> yeah, and as you notice, uh, well, I don't know if you noticed, but there's there was a shift in the in the editing in at the very end. We did like a, 
which also uh, switched the scene right before, which uh, affected, of course, what we ended up choosing. And was it because of the music? Because the music was recor recorded, so you could edit it through on the music, on, on the recorded music? Uh, no, we, we edited and then with the different layers that you had recorded, uh, then Ruben composed uh, like uh, different propositions that we just... Uh yeah, exactly. And um, I think what's, what's nice, what you, uh, what nice I think is what you, what you see here is that we, the pizzicato element came in on the second version and then it stayed, but it had to be much sparse on the third version, on the final version, because... That's the thing with like something that is like quite um, st um, static and it gives a kind of pulse. You cannot do that for one minute because then then it just feels, in my opinion, it just feels a bit weird. Um, so yeah. because it's, people expect it to go to something new or to some, you want to deliver that pulse. Yeah. And in a short scene like this, it was actually very difficult to keep the pizzicato. But on the other hand, she liked it. So we had to use it very sparse. Yeah, the reason it was working is because it's it's a scene that in itself is a goodbye, that it's a bit sad. But um, if you see the whole movie, <laughs> the way the character is thinking about it, it's like it's goodbye for now. So it's not super sad. This is for the horse's own good. So there is a sad tone to it, but the pizzicato is also a, a bit of mischievous uh, element to it. Uh, because the character is doing some mischievous things. Um, so to not make it be like, oh, this is the saddest scene ever, but to have this element and to also play with silence. And there's a difference between the two first ones and the last ones in terms of where they end, because the um, uh, again, with the sound design, uh, bringing in nature and uh, having music and suddenly removing it in the goodbye, it feels more empty. No? We don't have to feel it more. I don't know. Yeah, again, like a sad goodbye, and you put like a a, a deep chord, um, nicely voiced. This is like what I did immediately, like super beauti beautiful beautiful uh, progression, and you end nicely on the on the goodbye. But actually, yeah, it works maybe for that scene. But once we you saw the movie, I mean, you 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 said to me, well, let's watch out for this because it, you were right. Um, we create like kind of high points in the movie that are maybe not mentioned there or not, not meant there on the edit and on the story uh, side. So also what I wanted to touch is that like sometimes, um, I, and for this project also, I record in advance um, things and then I use it like as a compositional tool. So it, for, uh, it's also in, in many other of the, of the in, in the ending of the movie, the the is just my viola with a very very crappy microphone um, but it just stayed there um, which is fine um, and here also like we have like uh, I think from three different cues actually information so we just I would just make a collage again with it yeah are there any questions about, about this, this clip or about, about the music in general about life oh there oh two we go first in the back and then to you. Yeah, you catch it. <laughs> oh. Yo. Um, I, I love the music. I thought it was wonderful. I just had a quick question about one of the sounds. Closer, in closer to the box. Sorry. Yeah, thank you. One of the sounds in the first mock up of the last cue we watched sounded like a flutter tongue flute or a low was it an alto flute i'm just curious because i love the sound yeah yeah that that's that's a nice question yeah so it was um we i let the, the flutist bring like all, all the flutes he had so we had a bass flute and uh, in the in natalie was present in the recording session which is uh, i maybe i I'm, I'm still young but if i would give an advice and it's like bring your record bring your director to the recording session if you do a single instrument and you have some time um because then we could really like work on what is the sound that you really want and we we layered flatter tune with normal normal tones but we always change when we double track we always change the instrument because otherwise our frequencies would just like uh, yeah just collide very much so for example when we had like a flatter tune bass flute then we would have a normal tone on normal flute like layering so changing the instrument and changing the technique so in this way we get a bit of larger organ soundy flutes 
Thank you. Uh, was there another question? Yeah. Oh, the box is coming. He, you have to wait for the box. Have you have to, to wait, wait for the magic box. They really, they really stress this. Uh, like, oh, when there's a question, wait for the magic box. Voilà. Hi. Hi. Um, I'm kind of new, but I was wondering um, how much time did you have for the recordings? And um, what kind of budget did you have for it? I really have no, absolutely oh. no idea. Uh, we can tell, the budget, right? I, don't, I don't know. I mean, I do yeah, have like what, I, like I can, what I kind can, uh, of range is this? Or like okay, so um, I think this, this, um, this range of budget on, on recordings uh, was, no. was not, not, not super big. I think it was around between six and eight, 8,000. Um, and then we had for the studio, as we did a lot of recordings in, uh, in, in Belgium. So all the instruments that could be separated, we do it in Belgium. I did it with people that I knew already and that I have a good connection with, so I could improvise with them on the spot, which was nice. Um, so we did the day of flute and cello solo, and then we did the day of string quartet, and then we double tracked the full string quartet with an orchestra afterwards. Um, and that orchestra session was four hours, I think, something like that. Just like two and a half days. Like yeah, two something two like that, two and a half, yeah. Okay. Interesting, thanks. You know this. Any other question? No? Okay. We continue to the next clip then. But what time is it? Oh, we have time. Yes? Yeah. I'm always checking the time. No, no, we have time. Yes? Okay. So you want to do the, the, the beetle or the water? The beetle. the beetle. Okay, so we go to number nine and then number ten. Oh, I can say something before. Uh, oh. Before we go to the clips, so you know what you're gonna watch. Um, first is number nine, which is a proposition. You will see, uh, but number ten, you will see uh, how this proposition changed because it was too close to another queue, and uh, so we continue to the next queue because the next queue kind of um, took over the first queue. You will see, but what's interesting about the last piece you will listen to. Uh, which has more of the orchestra as well, uh, is that that one influenced the editing completely. This one we had from very early, and it was almost like a first draft. We edited with it, and it uh, it stayed. Uh, so yeah, it influenced my Ellen's editing. So so what happened? I had like and I they they we agreed already on one big piece that we that we found for the film, which we, we were happy very happy with, and then. This, this this scene came very close to that piece. So it was impossible to link the music that I wrote earlier to the new edit that I received, um, which because the instrumentation was like totally different and uh, everything was totally different. So we had to actually prolong or do something. Yeah, Voila. Nine and mm. 10.
The second one starts very subtle. Yes, we work a lot with the silence and with allowing the na natural sound to have a, a space, and it's like a more like a play between the music and the and the sounds. And I would sit with you a lot of times, and we would try how much silence, you know. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Those days. You almost feel a bit like. <laughs> I, I learned lessons from. Uh, I'm, I'm a very, very big Morton Feldman fan, so <laughs> so then you try to work with silence a lot. Like to keep silence is also important between notes. Uh, for now. Um, and this is a nice thing that we tried. I think I, I don't know we tried to to make it work. Uh, for me, the focus li li is a bit different. On the first cue, we had like the 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 wind coming on the the moment she blows on the beetle, like almost reviving the beetle with the music. On the second one, it was more about the movement of the beetle that that then sparks this this walk that we have, or her like frantic walk, and this frantic walk we had also very early on. So I had to work with the idea of pizzicato, and I had to work with the idea of like uh, chaos on a scene that I didn't expect it at all that it would be there. Um, on the other hand, from the script, yeah, yeah, yeah. Would you like to add something more about the latest clip or would you like to take a question from the audience? If you have any question, I think this is the last clip we yeah. will show. So. Yeah, we will, not, we, we will end. Oh, there's a question in the back. A uh, very lovely cue. Um, I was just wondering, do you start like this on your viola, for example, when you have the pizzicato in mind, or like uh, with a mock-up, or on the yeah. piano, for example? Good, good question. Uh, so, I I had two approaches at a certain point. So my first approach was, um, uh, I mean, it's quite improvisa improvisatory. It can be quite improvisatory. Let's do it on the viola, and that's. Let's. I mean, I play viola, so I, I and I had a cellist as a friend, so we just we went for it like super a lot of tracks and just like make cows with music. Um, but then came the moment that I thought, oh, but how, how difficult would it be then to re-record this? And then I started to to have trouble um, to find a click track, to find anything that remotely makes it gives it sense. So for the other cues, I was more precise on my notation and I used uh, a MIDI notation with just like uh, pizzicato samples because we knew we were going to use pizzicato and we knew it was going to be cows because like we found a, a kind of sound for fire, which was a bit did, this like, uh, and this kind of frantic walk we linked to her, to her fi fire. Uh, I mean, at a certain point, can I spoil it? Did she? Yeah, there's a fire at some there's point. A, there's but a fire at some point. This is her inner fire coming yeah, out. And this is like for her, like a bit the inner fire. Voila, I hope this answers your question. And notation wise, like how did you then solve it? Like Penderecki style, or like did you have a legend? In no, your no, I, I, I did both. So, so I had the double tracking of like five times the same orchestra f for this. One, one was uh, Penderecki wise um, improvisatory. <laughs> One was exactly what we did because, as I can say, Natalie was quite quite uh, particular about. So I was like, "Oh, let's improvise it, right? It's, it's chaos, it's it's element, nice." But then at a certain point, she was like, "Oh, but this was a bit sooner, and this was a bit later." I was like, "What? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> never expected you to say that." Um, so so I started to be more secure in my notation then. Yeah. Um, so I had I had a version that was exactly what at a certain point was improvised. Yeah. Thank you. I don't know if we, have, if we have time left for a final question. Oh, one final. Here. Last question. Yes, hi. Hi. Um, well, I can tell that you've been collaborating really well, or, or that's at least what I can tell from how you are talking. 
Um, and I was wondering, like, at what point in production uh, did you get asked to do this? And how much um, yeah, did you talk about the movie beforehand? Um, yeah. Yeah, good question. Um, we, uh, how much before? I don't know, but a while before, because we had to make some uh, specific pieces that were going to be in the movie, because there are some prayers in the movie, and we're creating a fictional town, and we wanted fictional prayers, so Ruben created the music, and I created the lyrics for those. So already there, we're collaborating with some of the pieces. Uh, and the yeah, yeah, exactly. And the thing is, uh, when I... Most of the time when I when I I'm going to be in, involved in a project, I try to be involved in script phase, not not to have work done, but just to make sure that we connect, because otherwise, I mean, yeah, it's better to connect when you, <laughs> because it's years of your, it's it's many years of her life and maybe half a year or one year of mine. So voila. so you want to be in a project that you like and that everybody likes each other. Um, and in this case, it was it was very much the case. So this was very nice. Voila. Yeah. I think we Natalia and Ruben, thank you so much oh. for sharing your experience here. Um, thank if you. If anyone wants to see the film, if you haven't seen it yet, there is a screening in half an hour. Um, we have a short break now uh, because we have to change computers, but feel free to stay seated. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you so you. much for coming.